what, what the mate is talking about. What's up, family? A new survey released on Thursday has stated that Donald Trump is disliked all over the world. I don't know why this is news. I thought we already knew this. But anyway, the man that promised to make America great again is perceived to be arrogant, dangerous, ignorant, and repulsive. I threw the last two in, but that's how I feel. And it's true. Now, a Pew Research Center says that they, this survey encompasses 37 nations and only a median of 22% had confidence in Donald Trump's ability to do the right thing in terms of international affairs. By contrast, Barack Obama, Donald Trump's predecessor, he had 64% approval in his waning years of his presidency. Now, what are these countries? What are these places? Who is saying that this guy is that horrible of a person? Who is saying that they dislike this guy so much? What are these insignificant nations? Try, try all of Latin America. Damn this nation. Let's try Latin America. Let's try some continents. Latin America, North America, Europe, Asia, and Africa. All disprove of him. They all say he's the worst and he is destroying America's image. They have no confidence in America being able to maintain its leadership role in the world. See, for years, other, other countries have counted on America to be poised and to make smart and righteous decisions in terms of international issues. But now that we have this dumbbell in office, everybody shook up. They don't know what to expect. Only Russia and Vietnam has confidence in him. And we know why Russia has confidence in him. Because they helped him get into office. They rigged the election. They were co-conspirators with the other, however many Americans who voted for this sucker. Now, let me give y'all a newsflash. Not only do the rest of the world have no confidence in Donald Trump. The rest of the world is dismayed with Americans, period. Because in their minds, Americans knew who Donald Trump was and they still put him in office. Now, for all of you other countries, you're going to have your chance to arrest him because he got to come and visit. Got to do a little old diplomacy thing. But then again, don't worry about it. Don't even worry about it. Because Donald Trump don't like demonstrations. He don't like going anywhere that's going to be a demonstration. He don't like any type of pressure. He can't stand pressure. He get under pressure, he crack every time. I mean, he crack every time. He start pointing fingers and blaming other people and it's just shifting the blame. I've never seen a grown ass man avoid responsibility so much. I just never seen that before in my life. I mean, and we're talking about on a world scale. We're talking about on an international scale, avoiding responsibility. That's what he does. And he does it real well. The hilarious part is that a lot of Americans who voted for him and who refused to denounce him, they think that the quality of life in America is actually better than the quality of life in the UK. 
I'm not talking about getting money, y'all. I'm not talking about getting money. I'm talking about the quality of life. I'm talking about when you wake up or when you land in your house, when you land in, in bed, how afraid are you that somebody's going to break into your house? Somebody may break in your house. When you go outside, get into your car, how cognizant of you, of your surroundings, and you're worried about somebody may try to jack you? How fast do you get into that car when you come out of the shopping mall? How much fear do you have just being an American, moving around? And I'm talking about for all Americans, for some it's even more. That fear is even greater. That fear factor is even greater. But for all Americans, I'm pretty sure it's safe to say that Americans are running around here scared to death. So we're talking about quality of life. We're talking about this fear that a lot of Americans have that contributes to various health diseases, uh, health issues where just being stressed out can kill you. We're talking about things like that. We're talking about quality of life. We're not talking about getting money. <laughs> We're not talking about buying a car and building a multi-million dollar business. We're not talking about that. We're talking about quality of life. How close are you to your family? How close are you to your neighbors? Do you know who your next door neighbor, do you even know your next door neighbor's name? Talking quality of life. Can your children go out and play in the front yard or even the backyard with or without supervision? Can that happen? How closely do you have to watch your child when you're in the mall? When you just go to the stop at the corner store, even on the playground. How intent are you when you're watching your child? How, how intense are you when you're watching them play? Because you know at any moment they could be snatched up and you can never see them again. I'm talking quality of life. It don't compare. If you ask the world to choose to stand in two lines, one to shake Donald Trump's hand and the other to finger bang um, to finger bang a monkey. I can guarantee you <laughs> not just a monkey but a monkey with irritable bowel syndrome. I can guarantee you that'd be one busy monkey. Real talk. This dude is the worst of the worst. And he's a fan of Hitler. It's no secret as to why he acts the way he acts. He got that dictatorship thing going on. Where he does whatever he wants. And, and I'm going to tell you something. I surmise that after watching him and checking him out, I was like, you know what? Part of the reason why he does what he does is because he saw with the Clintons and the Bushes and the Reagans, he saw things, how things operate in Washington. And he saw how you just pass money around and you get what you want. You do what you want when you got money. You, money give you access, money give you power. So he realized when he, as he saw these other presidents disrespecting the White House, and he saw all of these Congress people disrespecting the White House, he said to himself, he, this helped him develop a low opinion about the respect of US politics and the presidency and the White House. I do believe this is what helped shape his mentality and why he's so reckless with how he does things because he realized like he watched them operate and he was like man this ain't nothing man these people do man this is this this is all about money man it's all about money 
And I do believe that's why he is the way he is. As any real, like, irrational person might conceive, America don't need allies. <laughs> it's people out there that really believe that. That they really believe that America, so what if the rest of the world hates us? We're America. We're big, bad America. We do what we want to do. We don't need anybody. And that's why America is trillions of dollars in debt with China, huh? Because we don't need anybody. That's why America are always snooping around Africa, huh? Because we don't need anybody. I'm trying to make it seem like on one hand, Africa is useless, has no resources, has no value. But at the same time, they are always snooping around. Only small, peewee, narrow-minded people believe America don't need international approval before they do something that has international implications. America needs its allies. If it didn't, they wouldn't have military posts set up all over the world. Wouldn't have an embassy in damn near every country. Don't let the smooth taste fool you, man. It is arrogance that has taken down every major empire in history. Arrogance. Arrogance. Donald Trump is the worst. Absolutely worst. And I ain't even talking about presidents. I'm talking about one of the worst human beings. And I hesitate to call him a human being. I say, let's check his DNA. Because he definitely got some animalistic type qualities. Donald Trump's only legacy will be that he had a mental illness named after him. No more talk. What, what the ladies talking about? Yeah. Order, Texas.